But uh, Yule Friend says, the worst question is, okay, cool, but why is that useful? I get I got that question uh, a lot. You know, if you have engineers in your life, they're sort of the technical people that you can, you can explain in more detail to them about what you're actually doing. But then it's sort of like, yeah, but why is that useful? And that's sort of like what they're programmed to ask. Yeah. I, I've also gotten questions in my undergrad. I did my, the, the theoretical physicists, um, uh, all worked in the applied math department. So if you want to do theoretical physics, you're in the applied math department in your undergrad as well. And I would tell people I'm doing applied mathematics and they'd be like, Oh, so you want to be a high school teacher? I was like, Oh, <laughs> not, not really to, to be honest. Um, yeah. Why is that useful? Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I imagine they didn't think general relativity was useful when they first uh, when they first discovered it. But like, uh, yeah. it's when people say that, I generally like to um, I like to chat about sort of like understanding the universe for the sake of understanding it ends up having sort of benefits that you can't see. Like lots of NASA missions, for example, give lots of. Uh, side effects and, and, and new technologies because people are tasked with yeah. solving uh, problems that no one has ever uh, been asked to solve and then that always has unintended consequences um, and same same for theoretical understandings like we, we have technology that might have come out a hundred years or longer after something was uh, something was proved but that technology relied on someone's work from a from from a century ago right so we we don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you'll say and it's oh, it, sorry. yeah. Go it's on. it's a building process in that like. Uh, well, I'm just saying it's a building process in that like even if they didn't rely directly on your work, they still cited you and like they brought something from, you know, like it's it's everyone's building on this giant stack of, of work. Yeah. And so yeah, like saying. You can you can bring it all back to this fundamental science, you know, is oh what's what's the point of doing this? Like, well, maybe that end goal isn't the point, but getting there, we had to develop all of this other stuff, and you know, it's it's about creating this web of 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 knowledge so that it's like Monte Carloing knowledge. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if all of us do it, we're gonna find the good stuff, right? <laughs> The, the funny thing is when it comes to GR and quantum, people at least know what it is. Okay, this is good for astro stuff. Quantum stuff uh, is good for X, Y, Z. But a simple but not boring example for stat mech isn't easy. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of what comes to mind for you, Wyatt. What, a good example. Like, what's a, what's a nice example that immediately sort of comes to mind for why stat mech itself is... So, so well, yeah, okay. I, I have an answer, but you, you can go first. Okay. Uh, well, okay. So, I mean, Statmec. Statmec. So Statmec is so broad that yeah. okay, we can we can talk about a lot of different things. There, I have kind of two ideas. One of which is Statmec is intimately connected with quantum information. Yep. And quantum information, like okay, you're not going to watch a quantum information talk with someone say using the word quantum computer in it. So if you want an application, you know, you need that broad base. Yep. Stat mech, if you want to talk about classical or quantum stat mech, the hottest topics are critical phenomena. And that's, people are really interested in critical phenomena and exotic materials and stuff like that. And you need stat mech to understand that kind of behavior. So, yeah, uh, you know, it might not be, you know, the, the, the sexiest, but... Statmec is used all the time for, yeah. Or the foundations of Statmec are used in understanding, you know, a lot of its behavior. Like, uh, I don't know. You can get, you can get, you can argue whether or not some of these things are Statmec, but you know, a lot of field. There's a lot of statistical field theories which are built off of Statmec, and that's you. You got to come from somewhere. You know, you you it's yeah i think yeah. there's a lot of ways you could you could draw that those lines 
Yeah, yeah, St StatMech has this weird place where it's it's not really a physical theory. What it really is, is it gives you a nice way to approach uh, problems in physics where if you just tried to use physical theories, you would get nowhere. So if you want to describe black yeah. holes, if you want to describe metals, like mm -hmm. ba basically echoing what Wyatt said, if, if you want, like, you're not going to be able to uh, understand, like, basic properties of metals. Like, this is like, if you open up a solid state physics textbook, right, this is often what they, what they sort of open with. The first, like, is, is the Fermi Dirac distribution a result of, of solid state physics or, or is it a result of StatMac? It, it's a result of StatMac, right? Like, it's a... It, you're basically to, it's poly exclusion principle plus the grand canonical ensemble and um so I, I guess the thing that i like to tell people when i get attitudes uh like that is that you know all all of these um like all of these fields that have these really really cool ideas and they pitch them to you like a lot of them stat mech is propping them up and is allowing them to say those things Right, Stat StatMac yeah. is the hidden t hidden tool set that allows you to sort of talk about these things in a very in, in a very accessible, like mathematically accessible uh, way. <laughs> You'll steal that. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a. I, I think. Uh, yeah, I yeah. thought about that a lot. I think they're drawing that. You know, yeah, it's impossible to draw the line. I think between quantum information, at least, and 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 StatMac. Yep. For me, in my mind. Um, in my mind too like I, th I think some people will somehow see like the boltzmann's entropy as um s somehow like they'll somehow think that that's like a thermodynamic entropy and then so and then they'll say like oh the von neumann entropy is like an informational entropy and in some sense yeah. that's fine but like it's really just like a maximization principle of the information to get to like one from from the other so for me I view StatMech as it's it, the foundations of StatMech is like an information. Yeah, it's our arguments from information theory. <clears throat> I think so. I mean, this might be a little bit of a tangent, and I don't know if we want to go there, but go there. Um, I think one thing. So one thing that we we don't necessarily do a great job of is is when you're learning about these basic models. So like. We, we always say, oh, here's the Ising model. Ah, like <laughs> nothing actually works with the Ising model. It doesn't do any, like, no, there's nothing that's, but <clears throat> we get into these, when you start doing kind of really, uh, w when you, when you, okay, you can look at higher, like more complicated models, but when you do things like, like RG, for example. I don't know if you're ever going to talk about RG. I, I definitely will. You so, can so, show. so just for the audience, uh, renormalization group yeah, is, is what I was talking about. Yeah, no, yeah, no worries. Um, Eventually we'll get there. We're going to do real yeah. space and K-space. Ooh, yeah, so it's K-space is the... I mean, that's one of the most beautiful things ever. I think it's, it's really nice. I love it. Um, <laughs> but you can show, right? You can show that there are models you can be like oh here's an ising model and let's throw in some other interaction and you can show that that interaction renormalizes out or becomes useless an irrelevant term right and so you can show that there's all this huge class of models that are all just the and we don't I like for me i don't remember like ever seeing that ever seeing that like by the way like this, all of the critical theory of this model, you can throw in terms that renormalize away and don't matter. Yeah, and yeah, universality. Like that concept where you want to talk. And universality. That's that's. I mean, that's my biggest. Like, I love it. It's magic to me. It's like like the yeah. idea of critical exponents and it's it, like scaling hypothesis. And that's just like like how does the universe work this way? And you can. And there are real models of, like, for example, the transverse fieldizing model was originally proposed as a model of, I think, some kind of, like, hydrogen fluoride or something like that. It was, it's, like, these things are are very real, and if you can add terms to them and then show that they don't ultimately matter, and so things kind of reduce a little bit, 
again, it's not exact, but it's pretty good. And so, say you know, I think that statistical mechanics really has its its its, its you know its hands in everything. You you all says universality blew my mind at first. I thought I misheard slash misread it. Uh, I can't, it, it can't be this powerful. It just can't, but it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I swear, I swear. Like, a lot of results in, in StatMech feel like that to me, where it's just it's just so powerful, and it's so simple. It's just like, well, it actually turns out you can just study this one model, and you get this whole class of models. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. The thing that blew my mind was like, oh, yeah, and by the way, all these exponents, they add up to two. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>